Yo, what it do, y'all? Welcome back to Fandom Frequency, where we get into the entire multiverse of fandom, baby. Everything, everywhere, all at once is here on the channel. That's what I'm talking about. No Lucy Lou, no Michelle Yo. <laughs> they look different, you racist people out there. I'm looking at you. <laughs> no, I was playing. I was like a whole joke I heard Michelle Yo was talking about. But anyway, we're here to get into none other than the dopest video game adaptation. That's right, I said it. HBO Max's latest series, the first big series of 2023. I'm talking about The Last of Us, starring Pedro the Pe internet sensation that is Pedro Pascal and the up and comer that is kicking a lot of ass in this show. Bella Ramsey as Ellie, mm -hmm. Pedro Pascal as Joel, no Mandalorian. But before we do that, make sure you're clicking on the buttons below the video. We appreciate each and every one of you subscribers. Right now. <laughs> and with no further ado, let's get into this bad boy. <laughs> I just found out that they were both in uh, Game of Thrones. Yep. I did Which, not know that, especially Ellie. I found that out I wasn't... after episode one. I saw an interview with the two of them, and they were talking about that. Yeah. How they were like, damn, we got we got our start on the same show, and that's what propelled his career he was... in the States. Because uh, um, Narcos was really big like overseas and kind of in the international market. Yeah. But yeah. that really blew up a lot more in the U.S. after he kind of got into Game of Thrones. And that's what catapulted him and got her career started. So right. it's funny how they both found their way back to each other. And that happens a lot with actors. It's pretty funny to see that go down. He started off in, in Game of Thrones first yeah. or, or Narcos first? Uh, was I think it was... You when, would have a little bit of a better idea I think that. uh, that's the one like, I was trying to pinpoint. Because Game of Thrones, the Google season he was one. in, yeah. You know I, I, mean? I, would I don't know. Because Game of Thrones was 2011 when it started, right? Norco, let me double check really? on that. I felt like it started sooner than that. But wait, 2011 actually sounds like a long time sounds ago. Sounds about, yeah, you know what I mean? It sounds even closer it, even than it is. Even though it sounds closer than it is, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Norco season one came out in 2015. So that's where like he plays as Javier, uh, Pascal played as Javier Pena, uh, Pina in that series for the Javier Norcos. Pina. Pina. Pena. Pena. Javier Pena. Then, you know what I also saw online that kind of made me laugh? Hmm. That Pedro Pascal always on this second episode of two hit t TV shows, aka like Mandalorian and Last of, Last of Us. In the second episode, someone blows up to sacrifice himself for him and, and like a, as a father figure protecting like a oh, sweet, damn. innocent kids. He keeps getting all these parallels, man, I tell you. Groot. No, wow. Not Groot. Sorry, peeps. Don't get mad. Who? Grogu. Oh, oh Grogu. <laughs> and Ellie. <no? laughs> this is almost as crazy as that, uh, as that S tier Spider Man nonsense. <laughs> Oh my yeah. God! We oh, were yeah, going into yeah, that. Yeah. We, that's that's another. Speaking of which, make sure you <laughs> check out the MCU Phase Four tier oh, ranking. Man. We did it from S tier to F tier. The entire first half of 2021's releases. Make sure you check that out. That's going up today, same day as this video. So make sure you check it out. But that was pretty oh, yeah. funny though. He yeah. blew it. He, two oh, other characters wait, sacrificed. Like, wait, not second episode. Sorry. But yeah, because that happened in the last episode or, of the last episode yeah. of the first season of Mandalorian. Yeah. But two two episodes with him having a character sacrifice. Yes. Oh, oh nice. That is pretty pretty funny. But yeah, man, it is crazy, man. But yeah, dude, freaking main actors are kicking so much ass. And after some of the online controversy from some closed minded folks of the last episode leading into this episode, which is still somewhat of a departure, I would say, from the overall game storyline. We got a little bit further along thanks to this guy bailing my ass out of the museum. Oh, yeah. In playing the PS5, uh, <laughs> PS4 uh, remake on PS5. Y'all know. Right? Yeah, doing uh, all yeah, that, playing but, the game. Uh, for what we know, this episode seems like it's close but still deviates quite a bit and expands upon one of the mercenary groups that we don't really necessarily get to know that intimately in the game and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. starting off with either one of you guys... Uh, what you think about this episode overall, man? Mm, I'll let you go first, Miguel, because okay. like I, I, I got like some comparisons. To see All right, where it's going for it. I, oh, I nice. like, I liked it very much. I've been saying that for the past four weeks. Obviously, mm -hmm. every episode is a, literally a hit. It is I like the switch from a, such a sad and and like love story last episode to a way more comedic relief start off to this episode you know yeah, it's it's puns. such yeah with the pun <laughs> yeah and like dude. a magazine uh. and everything you know like it's uh. it's good stuff I like it. Yeah, I think uh, I give this episode a 8 out of 10. 
Eight out of ten, yeah. solid, solid. I, every time I say that, but then I think about it. Okay, every time I say that, I rethink it later on throughout my days, and I'm like, maybe I should have gave it a nine. We'll give it a <laughs> all, all, every episode has been good. You yeah, know? it's been like it's been pretty awesome. It's been pretty. I, that's why I'm like I'm liking the series a lot because they have a lot of adaptions from the video game, and they blended it so well with it being as a TV series, and I, I appreciate that a lot. Like yeah. that's like one of my the biggest enjoyments I have each Sunday. Every time I'm able to get a chance to watch it always enjoy seeing what they do differently and if they do do something differently it always goes really well from what we see from the video game from the tv series and that's because the creators have a handle on the material they get it they respect it and they want to honor it and bring it to life they're mm -hmm. not trying to change it and make it more marketable or make it appeal to this audience or that no they're trying to create the last of a story and bring it to life and keep what works and and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. That's the main thing, I think, that a lot of these studios over the last 30-some years, they've been making video game movies and TV series and adaptations they haven't been understanding until very recently that if you keep the essence of what the game is about and what the characters are, mm -hmm. similar to other adaptations from novels and comic books and all these different things, then you can actually make something that the fans are going to enjoy, but other people are going to get into because great stories translate no matter what medium you tell them in. Right. You know what I mean? So... That's the main thing that these guys definitely understand. And HBO, they make great TV series all the time. So oh, yeah. I think it was just all the right creative uh, stuff along with all the right behind the scenes stuff that came together. And it's just been kicking ass every single week because I got to say, I love this episode too. I'm going to give this one a nine, dude. Solid because nine. It's really just building on Joel and Ellie's relationship in such a compelling and realistic way. It just feels like two people really getting to know each other and bond naturally. Mm -hmm. And it's insane how they're able to play that over this course of the series so well. The ke their uh, chemistry together is really, really good too. And I really love the way that they can share a lot of fun banter but get really serious in this episode at the same time. Oh, yeah. Without yeah. it seeming like out of place or anything like that, which is very reminiscent of the game. But I like that Bella Ramsey adds her own shades to the character and does... Um, say, you know, she does cuss more than Ellie does in the game. She doesn't have as much of a southern accent as Ellie does from the game. I would say Ellie sounds more like a West Coast person than mm -hmm. really someone from the southern, from the south or from the east coast in the U.S. So I kind of like the way that her accent isn't really centralized anywhere because she didn't live anywhere in the normal times because she was born like, literally six, seven, eight years yeah. into the world as we know it with the whole fucked up apocalypse going on. So yeah. I love the way that they're just blending um, character development along with taking you along with the storyline and they really took their time in this episode it was very slow mm -hmm. but they really really did establish some really cool stuff with the um with that other mercenary group or whatever they are that probably like enemies of the fireflies and other factions out there with, so to speak oh that that we've seen Melody, um, uh linsky Mel uh, oh. Melanie linsky's character the original character they wrote for the show right and showing the whole revenge element she's got going on so i love the way that they're just weaving everything together and they just set you up with that dope ass cliffhanger that we'll get into that just t perfectly sets you up for the next episode and it just seems like every episode the tension gets crazier and it just gets more and more intense so I love this series, man. I also do appreciate like the realism that they have, like how yeah. they mention like the gas, like for and that's like only right. one of them. Siphoning how like the gas. siphoning the gas and also like gas does break down over time, mm -hmm. so it makes kind of makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense that like they have to stop like every hour and compared to like to with today's like gas it just gasoline, works, you know? it just works and it's because it's very potent with all the chemicals still because it's still fresh. Yeah, we can go so much longer with um yeah. with each like you know for with each trip. And compared to like how Joel's doing it, they have to do like every hour siphon it from each cars that they're able to get. And having that little detail, I always do appreciate that a lot because it kind of shows like the more realistic, grounded level of what could possibly be like the, what the post apocalypse could be looking like if we had a vehicle like that. Like it won't be like a straight, like narrow, oh, we filled up, we can last like miles and miles like, like realistically and all these other movies you know yeah whatever mad max whatever the hell's going on mad max that's a perfect one yeah they, they probably don't even like think about gas they just run <laughs> it is just it is going with me and all this shit for miles and miles and shit and the gas just lasts forever yeah. it's like so the fuck perfect, perfect way to kick off the recap portion of the episode right there and that's pretty much where we can start off with them you know pretty much going on the road continuing the journey if mm -hmm. you will you know, we haven't gotten any more of those flashbacks kind of showing um, things that set up everything in the past or Yeah, what's, what's up with that? I kind of... Kind of miss it? I kind of miss it, yeah. You miss that? They, oh. oh. Yeah, because they kind of just left it at, at like... The with, first two. With the science... or oh, the teacher or whatever she was. I think oh. it was like the... 
she was a professor, I believe, you know, and she was the one who you know cut up the the first or the fourth. Well, I don't even know who did it was. the kind of came in contact with in the, the second first episode. Yeah, people. exactly. And, right. Um, Kim, uh, I believe that was uh, oh shit, like in Indonesia or something. Yeah, I think it was. I was trying to remember it. Jakarta. There, there you go. go. Nice. Jakarta. Jakarta. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just to make, I'm just trying to remember the stuff so to be more clear, you know, when we're doing stuff. But, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, Jakarta. Uh, I, I kind of feel you on that one, man. But I, I'm just waiting to see how the rest of the episodes play out. They could bring it back in or whatever. But I, I'm kind of with you. I kind of did like that setup in a certain period of time that was kind of setting up the world yeah. and all that kind of world building and whatnot. But at the same time, I love the focus they've been having in the last two episodes, really getting in with Joel, Ellie. And uh, Bill and Tess and just building out the characters that we're going to be spending this journey with and getting a lot of background information on Tommy as they were having conversations throughout the episode as Ellie was trying to navigate the best way she could with the map and whatnot Mm -hmm. as they were trying to make their way to Wyoming and they ended up coming uh, or... Did they did they stop first to get some rest until before they D, they hit that dead end? They did stop first yeah. to get yeah, rest, like yeah. yeah, and then that. I'm trying to make sure I got it right. I like that too because like even like let's say like just talk about like the portion where of the episode where they stopped and he kind of camped overnight. Yeah, I liked like how Joel was like his like they we kind of see a lot more of his experiencing like. For instance, the fire, because the fire is for sure, like, you don't have to worry about the, the infected mm-hmm. or anything like that, because they're so remote, like how you mentioned, it's so remotely away from everything. But the main thing, the main threat is people, and the people is usually very unpredictable. Oh, yeah. And that's why he says, like, he's kind of like, he's, he, as he's mentioned throughout the episodes, like, he's been on both fronts. He's been the people who's been doing kind of like that whole invading or he was like the person that was getting he invaded was on, on. Side of it, yeah sure. yeah and he was so he kind of understands so th- i like that detail too is like when they were officially getting set up and camped up he kind of like he pretends he's going to sleep or right when ellie kind of like lays the bed and stuff like that he kind of gets up with his hunt uh, with a hunting rifle and kind of keeps watch because he knows like at any point in time somebody can come up on them and it can go drastically bad so that's why I kind of do joy. I like that little detail with like the little camping stuff, um, the little camp, like I guess site um, in that portion of the episode, and also too like we kind of see that bonding uh, relationship between Joe and Ellie, and Ellie's kind of really even in the gas station is kind of like nail like trying to break through that barrier yeah, that Joe has sure. been uh-huh. setting up for yeah. so much, and he like throughout this episode you kind of see it see himself kind of like open up like very little bit and you see at the end of this episode like he starts smiling and laughing and he's kind of like letting himself kind of like first time since the first episode back in 2003 yeah yeah (laughs) and then that (laughs) that's why it was just like it's it's cool to see like that kind of character development because even in the game that's kind of something that you see you see joel's character kind of like re kind of rebuilding himself in a sense with ellie as he journey on throughout with their main goal, which is like in the show, getting uh, Ellie to the scientist with the fireflies so they can get that cure um, pretty much set up for them. So I really did enjoy that portion. Uh, pretty much it's like that essence of this episode a lot, uh, which is like the relationship building. And that I know a lot of people were talking about too. I know in some parts they were talking about like the infected, there wasn't too much in the town, which I could kind of get too uh, that's why i'm kind of wondering to see where they kind of have like all the infected stored up or whatever uh whatever the case may be Mm. because in the main city they didn't really have a lot of that so that's like kind of like i know some people's uh, nitpicks or something like that with the with this episode but i didn't really mind it too much i like the whole relationship building and like that whole commute um the whole commute in between like for instance like with the truck uh with joe and ellie this is like straight out of the video game with ellie kind of going around the the truck and then he, she find like the porno magazine because mm-hmm. that was <laughs> that was bills and that was originally bills and then that's <laughs> like these the, pages all stuck together a, word for word He's exactly like, uh, like that mm, <laughs> yeah i'm just fucking with you man yeah and, and i love that i love that they were able to bring that to like to the live of the action and hey, make it seem pretty pretty neat weird, but it's funny to know that people are still getting getting it on like that with or with themselves, with someone else in the apocalypse. Sex is forever, baby. Yeah, Sex it, it's, is forever. it's a tension that needs to be released. Hey. I mean, <laughs> especially then, bro. You probably got to make that shit a weekly thing, bro, just to keep your sanity. You know what I mean? So, right? <laughs> and women, bro. Hey, I'm not playing, bro. Yeah, bro, yeah. Shit. But that's that's the one thing I did enjoy a lot. I just like that we seen a little bit some like some clips and things like that that they had from the game and they implemented with the like with this episode, Dude, pretty much. Man. They're 
they're nailing that. Like, as good as Marvel and things of that nature, I would say. Like, Marvel's probably been one of the best um, kind of uh, adaptations or movies or things. They kind of take things straight out of the comics. Like, Drax getting broken into blocks in Infinity War, just like oh, Infinity right. Gauntlet. Yeah, that did happen. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Like, the mm-hmm. way that they were able... Because we were just playing the game today at the recording of this video, if you're watching in the future. And we literally were seeing sequences from Episode 2 play out in the game. Uh in real time, exactly the way they did it in the show, frame by frame, everything, sometimes mm-hmm. down to the exact dialogue and all that. And to me, that is just brilliant storytelling when you make it seamless. When I didn't even know that with the other two episodes, and I could feel that, and you could have that that whole vibe of where the people that play the game are going to appreciate that level of detail, but it's not going to be distracting for anyone else. So it's not fan service for the sake of fan service. Mm-hmm. It's making the actual adaptation true to what they're trying to tell and that's the story of the last of us yeah and i don't mind there not being zombies in there i'm not i'm not sure how you guys feel about that i don't think you guys may mind as much either for the last two mm. because they're building out the characters and that's what the last of us that's why the legacy of the game lives on past the gameplay is mm-hmm. the characters is the story is the world so if you don't take time to build those out and as a tv series you're not taking that time to establish it and even make all the characters more developed than even the games did then why the hell are you making a, a thing in the first place? So to me, I think these totally are true. necessary to set up all the action with the different human factions and setting up the infected because we haven't seen different forms of the infected. There's like another two or three, like another form or two we haven't even seen yet. We, we haven't even seen like infected at all for these last two episodes. Yeah, exactly. But there's like other forms we haven't even seen past the clickers. Yeah. As it goes on, they continue to mutate and evolve. We haven't even seen the worst versions of that yet. I think one of them was like bloaters, and yeah. we're gonna be seeing one. Of, I, I think what? that one Which, we're gonna be hey, seeing in the next alert episode. For the game players, you'll be trying to make your way through, but not gonna tell you with the context. But there's bloaters, there's other things where we haven't even seen that yet. And you were saying we hadn't even got into that big military faction either as much in the show. That's another comparison. Like Fedra is kind of more presence is a little bit more Hail known. Fedra. Yeah, hell, that's like that's like the one thing that I didn't notice is like because I thought the um, the group that we ran in within this episode, I thought they were the Fedra, but they were people who kind of have their own setup, not really like a government uh, run kind of like I guess organization. What are you talking group. about right now? Like the Fedra? Fedra is like, like kind of the group the, that was uh, trying to find Joel and who killed that guy. Oh, okay. Attacked them in their sleep. yeah, yeah, and like and um, which we call it. In the first, the Fedra is like the per, kind of the people we've seen, like the people we've seen in the first episode. That's kind of like Fedra, like oh, operated right were there. Army, military. So, yeah, we haven't seen any of the Fireflies yet. We only we seen a, met, we met um, a couple we of them. Met Marlena. Mar- Marlene, she, yeah, yeah. Mar- yeah, Marlene. Sorry, and she's one of the main leaders or one of the big uh, people in charge in the group. So those people that were with Ellie in episodes one, those are Firefly members. Got it. Tommy and. Um, Joel and Tess are former Fireflies themselves, so that kind of counts as well. I really like, but we just haven't seen like their base of operations or anything like that. We got more of a background into Tommy's life because yeah. I, oh. I, for like a while I was already asking like, "Where's Tommy at? Like, what happened to him?" And but even that's though the way yeah, it's they, out they the say, game. "Oh, okay, you don't yeah. see him for a minute." Like we haven't even seen him yet. Mm-mm. Past the flashback when the whole world goes to shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, I like that we got a little more context about about him, you know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I think we're gonna be seeing him because this one was episode five, right? If no, I could remember. Or four. This one's four. This we're one's four. And five. next one's episode this five. Friday because they're trying to put it out earlier than the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, I saw Sunday, that. So oh. Friday night it's gonna be. Oh, okay. I, I can yeah. see that a little bit earlier. Exactly. Okay, so so this word out for all you fans out there, check it out Friday night, not Sunday. It's all going to be the big, uh, the big game and Rihanna back on concert. So that's all you're going to hear about all Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's gonna, the Last of Us uh, Friday night, and we'll have the review up uh, Monday. I'm going to foreshadow. Usual. Tommy's going to totally backstab uh, Joel. Don't let me know. Don't make any I, case. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna, I'm, I'm not because like I already uh, know what kind. Of, I already well, know, I know what you happens. Do, so I, that's why I'm not gonna. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna say anything. But I, what I will say, or you're you gonna find next, out that. that Ellie's infected or something like that, and they can be like, "I have to kill her," and then Joel's gonna have to kill his brother. No, no, nah, I nah, know. you're gonna have to with like that's like ten foil shit. End, sir. Get off the Reddit thread, man. <laughs> that's like that's deep Reddit thread. <laughs> that's like bonkers. Like, Kate but the Conqueror was actually related to Scott Lightner. Imagine, <laughs> fucking shit. But no, like the next episode is gonna be. Because this episode was very short. It, it was, it right? Was it was, I, I think it was the shortest one out of all like of them. 50, it is. It no, was like 40 45 minutes. Ish, yeah, like 45, 46 minutes, something like that. It was. It, and but, the rest have been like 50-some minutes to like an hour and a half, even with the Bill and... Uh, the Bill and... Um, Bill and uh, Frank. The Bill and that Frank was an hour and a half episode? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was like an hour and like 15, 20 minutes. Like what? it was like over an hour. It was like a long. I remember it. Yeah. Damn. And the, this one was the, the shortest one, but I they're using this one. It's like more of a relationship building between Joe and Ellie, yep. and kind of like the the travel time, the commute time, where they're going to go. Yep. And as then, you always get in TV shows, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, and I I liked how they didn't like they kept it short and they kind of kept it straight to the point because like before we haven't even gotten to like the too much of the people who are owning that area because i like the detail like when joel and ellie kind of first go there it's all it's like a pretty much a big like a big yeah. setup that's what i like it started starting to see she was like hey man i'm trying to read this map give me a break it's my second day in a fucking car bro yeah and he's yeah. like i ain't worried about that i'm trying to get the hell up out of here because he knew they were fucked man homie's throwing a brick on the fucking windshield they had those fucking things on the road to flatten their tires i was like oh shit bro it gets it gets pretty real. They but, fuck. They just got that car too, bro. Damn. <laughs> they did. I think that's like the thing with each um, with each like movie, TV show. They get loaded up to the fucking brim, and then they lose it all instantly because afterwards. yeah, instantly. Not not even like a f- because they realistically what freaking Bill gave them it. They could have lasted like a long ass time. Yeah, yeah, the whole trip. It's a series, bro. <laughs> yeah, much. but they they something had to happen, which I do. Uh, well, obviously for them running into the people but i think with before like going back into it i think the next episode with the two people that we've seen towards the end those two characters henry and sam their storylines is gonna i i can't wait to see it because it's also it's like a heart-wrenching kind of storytell oh, uh man, storytelling I can't no more heart-wrenching with like show, what with what they got to go through and it's so intense too it's like a very oh, intense so it might be a flashbacky type vibe with these guys too in, in well with we them gotten ellie's flashback either which we know is coming from the trailer El, ellie i think we might get it towards like later like towards the end of the episodes we might see her a little bit more seven or something like that i would say like seven or eight like leading up to like the season finale to learn a little bit more about her character but with these two characters Again, like I like how they're kind of making this one more, like just the characters in general more fleshed out, more developed. Because we only run into these two characters, Sam and Henry, pretty much out of like pretty much kind of like in this setup. But they're more of um, they're already in hiding from the federal government. This one in the show, mm-hmm. there's a purpose in this one now, like why Henry, uh, why Henry is and Sam's kind of on the run. From the people owning that little area or something like that. Oh. I don't understand why why they're looking like the Fedra, right? Like the other the other oh like other the mercenary people? group in the yeah. show. Yeah, that's something that we're gonna dive I think into it's a, a lot. Third faction a separate third one? from the Fireflies. Oh, okay. and Fedra. Yeah, I think Fedra is more like the government militant kind of group. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a good example here. Like uh, the like the militia or something like that, yeah, or like, they're just like a whole like just like their own thing. Yeah, right? they're like they're their own establishment, pretty much. Okay. Like the Fireflies are like an organization that believes within like pretty much like um, the resistance of the government, pretty much, and Got then it. trying to have like that freedom will. They're the uh, rebellion. Freedom. Yeah, the Federal is the Empire. Yeah, it's, and then this other third group looks like just a whole it, complete it, separate entity unto like, themselves. The Mandalorians. Um, the Night's Watch, the Night Sisters, whatever you want to say, like the kinda Scavengers, like, yeah, kind of you know, like, like the a Scavengers whole third in that group sense. That just is separate unto itself. That is another threat for our main heroes, i.e., Mandalorian, i.e., Grogu. That's no, <laughs> freaking uh, Joel and Ellie. So that's kind of the whole thing getting set up there with Mel- Melanie Linsky's character, the lady that shot the guy that she was interrogating. Oh, the doctor. She's the lead of the of this other third faction. That mm-hmm. seems like they're targeting Joel and Ellie now for killing one of their own, even though he was about to stab the fuck out of them. Yeah, uh, you know, Smeagol style. So, but Man, that was pretty. I, I like that intense that scene. Actually. Oh, that intensity, Ellie, dude. I forgot to mention that. My bad, y'all, for jumping all over. The yeah, place here. sorry, <laughs> sorry. But I just want to mention one thing from the beginning that did foreshadow this, and I saw it coming. Ellie having Joel's handgun and her messing around with it in the mirror and everything and loading and unloading it. I was like, okay. Ellie's going to have to get into the action this episode. And that totally came back around when that dude from this third faction came up and tried to get him. And then he, Joel didn't see him coming. And thanks to Ellie having that gun and coming up on him, she was able to blast his ass and paralyzed him at first. I think she literally blasted his ass, yeah. yeah. He so shot him right in the ass, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's why I said he it. I like, she literally him. blasted his ass and paralyzed him. And I was like, damn, bro, Ellie cold out here. I- and then he was like, oh, oh. Uh, I, I, I'm not gonna hurt you and all this shit. And I was like, "Oh, don't fall for that yeah, shit." Ellie. For real. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Joel was like, "Get back, Ellie. Yeah. Beat this fucker to death and finish it." Nah, she. Oh, he, he, he straight up stabbed him. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Too. I think that I. 
yeah, I liked what they end up doing with the intent, like how you mentioned the intensity. Because in the game, like when you're killing the enemies, they're like screaming, at, like they're kind of screaming out, like their friend just got killed. And you kind of hear that throughout this episode. Like with, when Joel shot down one of the guys, the guy ran over to him in a panic. It's so like, you motherfucker. And then he was trying to like save him, but he wasn't able to. And I liked how they're actually bring a little bit more like. More like, personality. Yeah, with the enemies themselves. Like, they're also people, too, trying to live, trying to do their day-to-day -day and try to get back home safely. Yeah. And they kind of, you kind of have that blend there with, from what we've seen. And that, with that kid, like, that kid, he was, like, a young, like, he was young as hell. Probably, like, 19, 20. 19 you know? and 20. And then when Ali, when he was trying to fight Joel, and then he got um shot in the ass by Ellie, and he was paralyzed. Because I, I remember, he like, I think he was screaming, like, I can't feel my legs. Yep. I can't yeah, move. I did, yeah. And he was screaming out for his mom and stuff Which like that. really, really made me happy. Because I saw where she shot him. I'm like, this motherfucker better be paralyzed, or they just jumped the shark on this one. Yeah. And I was like, oh, there you go. That's why I love this fucking show. Yeah. And then, like, I loved how Joel was like, like, look away. Just, like, go away. And then Ellie, like, already like already starting to tear up because he she he hears like yeah and she he, he uh he hears that kid or she hears that kid just screaming out for help saying like no 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 and they're trying to be crawl away from joel but joel just grabbed a knife that he got from him and just stabbed yeah, him real. i'm like I at that respect from his own knife yeah i'm like dude that's this i, I and i like that too and i liked how they're at, kind of playing that whole like the enemies too kind of like we kind of have that personality like how we talked about before like each one of them has their like their own like i guess personas like friends fam like friends or family going out doing a mission yeah everyone has their own perspective no one's truly evil so far besides maybe the federa you know what i mean yeah I mean, federa federal government you know what i'm saying there's a, definitely a parallel there with mm -hmm. that so <laughs> if anyone i i think like pretty much like you said most of the characters are humanized they have a perspective and a point of view whether it's right or whether it's wrong you understand where they're coming from i mean obviously that's truly good writing right there off the bat if you feel like they're bad because they attacked joel just like exactly yeah really fast, right off know? the step yeah. and when, exactly and that there was like that hell set up too before they got in because like i liked that we saw joe's ex uh, experience he's like Oh fuck, that guy's not fucked up. And he looks around, everything's all blockaded out pretty much. And it kind of leads them into that trap, which they do end the brick already, slash the tires when somebody was gonna go over them. And then majority of the times if they would go up against like people who were inexperienced and like like in comparison to Joel, they would have been screwed over. Yeah. They would have been killed or whatever it may yeah. be and taken all their supplies. And I like that whole that little um that that little glimpse that we we're able to see. And they were they're just as evil too. And there's two stories of the of each narrative. Obviously, for them, they're just uh, they're seeing like uh, Joel and Ellie kind of as evaders and stuff like that, outsiders. Yeah. yeah. And then well, for Joel and Ellie, they're like, "Fuck, we're just trying to get the fuck out of here." But we're kind of set up to this dev trap, and Joel's already seen how this dev trap already kind of works. Yeah. And that's what I did enjoy a lot. I enjoyed that a lot from um from this episode overall, and I liked that that little banter afterwards when they go to. When they pretty much go inside the building and they kind of have like that banter going back and forth, trying to go inside the building with Ellie, and you kind of have that comedic, uh, kind of like jokingly back and forth with Joe and Ellie, kind of like talking shit or shooting, the, breaking each other's balls a little bit. Yeah. And then, um, like for instance, like this, and like for them going up the stairs, they kind of have like more of that deep talks as well. There's like both that comedic uh, comedy and also the deep talks, like with and when Ellie was talking to Joe, it's like, how did he know that they were that that the whole thing was a trap? And we learned a lot more with Joel saying like, oh, it's because I've been on both sides of it. I know how it plays out and I know the whole purpose of it. Yeah. And I like that question and oh, we yeah, don't get, too. we don't get like the response of um, when Allie asked Joel, have you killed any innocent people? And Joel never replied to that. And he knows deep down oh, like yeah. he definitely As did. As a firefly, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think even like, maybe even when he left the firefly crew, I think with, um, for them, before they joined the Fireflies, they were like in a bad group, or they were in the group that was strictly oh, survival. Maybe they were in Melanie Linsky's group. Maybe like or a group similar to that. Yeah, yeah. and then like they were very cold hearted, cool, uh, cutthroat. Don't give a shit if, uh, what if you're innocent or not. I feel like they were in the Firefly first, and then they joined uh, like a, group a more of like bad, aggressive bad group. Like around the time they would have met Bill the first time we saw him, when they were kind of becoming making that trading deal. Yeah, maybe around that time. It could be that. It could be that. It depends on like how the um how they tell it and how they tell it and stuff like yeah. that. Because like in my like what I'm thinking what that might have happened is that like they probably did like they probably did join the firefly firefly group and then maybe Joel and uh, Tess kind of like branched out and joined like another group. But I feel like with the comment that they said with Tommy and um, 
with Tommy and Joel and uh, Tess that having to do bad things. That's why I think like they join like one those group those hardcore survival groups. I really do be cutthroat. Then Tommy kind of like seen like the light of things and kind of decides like you know what let's join the Fireflies. And then, like Joel mm, said, I kind of, I, I kind of like freedom fighter, believe in in the same thing when he was eighteen and went to the military the first time. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And then, like he kind of like wanted to join the Firefly. I would assume just to wash away all like all that, wash away all like the, uh, yeah, the sins of the past. Yeah, and just try to like make him like make himself kind of pure again, because like maybe for like for what Joel kind of seems like is like we've hurt probably innocent people. We didn't say it, but. With him kind of like not answering that question in that long pause, and he's like, just says, We got to keep on going up the stairs. Yeah. That he just kind of like pushed it off to the side. And then we'll probably see a little bit more of that when we see Tommy. And with like Tommy and Joel kind of go talk about a little bit more with what they kind of what, uh, what happened during like the 10 years or the 20 mm-hmm. years in between. Yeah. So I, that's why I think it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty interesting. But besides the stairways, I still like that whole shit talk that, um, that Joel and Ellie pretty much had. It was, when uh joel you kind of already see his age and he's like already done tired out oh, hey give me a break I'm yeah a yeah and i like that i like that whole shit talking that he had it's like okay, give me a fucking break you little shit i'm like 56 year old years <laughs> old you're like young as hell 12, yeah she's fu- yeah her joints are new and all that <laughs> stuff joel's he's like fuck dude like it's like another flight of stairs he's like out of breath and i like that that little um relationship building that oh, they man. still had throughout the whole but. time Good times don't last long in this show because Joel ends up setting up a little trap over there when they're about to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And he's putting all these like broken, like uh, what I would assume was like uh, light bulbs or something. Something made of glass. So that way if someone came into the room, he would hear them crunching on the glass. And he's like, uh, she's like, what are you doing, dude? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm making a, you know, I'm making a trap here. So that way no one can sneak up on it. She's like, oh, I get it. Crunch, crunch. Yeah, yeah. He's like, all right. He's like, you're gonna hear it. He's like, yes, I'm gonna hear it. That's why, well, no, duh, that's why I'm doing it. Damn it. I love how she mentioned that too because, like, I the other realism, uh, realism yeah. too. He can't hear out of one of his ears because of the gun, uh, all the gunshots that he's been firing throughout these years. Oh, so one ear is all shit, fucked you know up. What I'm yeah, I did, was it his left ear or was it his I right think ear? Right ear. His right ear was all fucked up, right? So he slept on like the good ear. So he that's the kind of makes sense of why he kind of like you know yeah, got jumps sleep this way. And I was like, uh oh. Yeah. And then they knock out after a while. After they're, you know, they're laughing and joking around a little bit more. And then they fall asleep. And then he ends up getting woken up real quick out of the blue at gunpoint because this one kid has Ellie at gunpoint. And then this other kid tells him to keep quiet and has a gun pointed directly at his face mm-hmm. and cut to black. And that is it for episode four, man. All the big plot points and all the big things that went down for this thing. So mm-hmm. obviously, the next episode's. Probably going to be the most action-packed one we've had in a while. Them having to escape from these guys and go on the run and get to Wyoming and get back on the road. So a lot of crazy twists and turns are sure to come. But uh, but yeah, man, absolutely love this episode. And I got a couple things here that we can get into a little bit before we wrap it up. Uh, one, where do you think it's going to go? Uh, where do you think it's going to go down in the next episode? I want to know from you since you've played the game. Oh, where do you think are my, are some potential things that, that that could go down in the next one? And then, before we get into that, we did get a season two announcement. They just released that this past week uh, after episode three that we are getting a season two of the show. So, starting off with my theories, how many seasons do we think they're going to have? And what is next season going to be all about? Because I think this first season is going to just conclude the whole storyline of the first game, part one. And then the second season, I think, is going to fill in a lot of the gaps between both games because slight spoiler alert for the games if you don't want to know anything the second game does have a little bit of a time jump in between the first and second so i think season two might actually fill in some of those gaps leading into the early part of the part two game and then season three will be the conclusion of the game two storyline and will end the series indefinitely last airbender style (laughs) but i'm gonna have skips go last on that one and then we can get into some of those episode five discussions as well okay how long do you think the series is gonna go and what would you like to see in season two or i think they're gonna do uh man it's it's just if it's with only nine episodes it's kind of it's kind of a short series you know well then again a lot of hbo shows are kind of like just the, mini not yeah. mini series but they're shorter episode runs. yeah they don't do the yeah. netflix thing i just don't understand if the if they were to fill in a story through the, like the time jump like, will they just make up their own story or or how would that work or to me it they... would be a balance of both because i think uh, now you correct me if i'm wrong i'm sure in the second game similar to this one you have exposition 
and or flashbacks that fill in at least a key few elements of things that happened with Joel and Ellie in between both games. Mm-hmm. So I would assume there's some there's some groundwork there that they could either use that to make a template to expand the storyline in the same way they did with this show, where those two cutscenes in the first two episodes that took place in the 60s and then in 2003 in in um, Jakarta, those weren't things that came from the game whatsoever. Those were completely original ideas they wrote for the series. Mm. So I think they're going to take the same approach and fill in some of these gaps in some of the first few episodes of season two and then lead into directly adapting part two verbatim in the present timeline of where the game took place in the beginning. But that's just me speculating. But that's essentially the way I see it laid out. So I think they would come up with some of their own ideas. I feel like this year do two seasons. That's it. Two okay. seasons. Two I don't seasons. want. I don't want that. I don't want it to kill like, Bill style part one, part two. I don't want like um, people to be hating on it because they're like, oh well, this is not even original to the game, or people just being like, oh, this is not as good as the game, whatever. You know, there's a lot of a lot of haters, I guess, out there. And I, yeah. I like The Last of Us a, a lot. I, don't know, I like The Last of Us a lot. Mm-hmm. So. I guess for me it will be fine because I've I've never played the game, you know. So right. I, it will be like everything will be new to me. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Be that's cool true. For, to see a third se- um, no, three seasons, but it just wouldn't make at the same time. At the same time, like, it wouldn't make to appease sense. Everyone, just, yeah. Let's just keep it one, two. Kill Bill Volume One, Volume Two. We're it, done. It, Duology. Let's it will be hard to like, I guess, um, like make a whole season just off that time skip, you know? Yeah, you're not yeah. wrong entirely. That's what I'm saying. Like, it would definitely be a challenge, but it just depends if they wanted to expand the story or not. But I wouldn't hate them just doing two and calling it a day either. But uh, but uh, same thing with you, man. Uh, where do you see things going here uh, um, from here for the season two? Do you think they're going to just adapt game one, game two, season one, season two? Because they did expand a lot of things with Bill, so I'm sure they're going to do the same thing, at least even in the game two storyline. But how do you see them kind of breaking it down uh, in the future of the series? I can see them doing it but there's two ways I can see like them go, just adapting to the second game to go straight to the point. The thing is though with the second game, the fan base on that one is so mixed. It's with that how, last Jedi type shit. Yeah, show. it's yeah. it's it's very mixed because with what the what with what they were trying to just like with, with what they were showing is kind of. Um, because I don't want to like say too much with like what happens to like what happens to some of the like to some of the characters. I feel you, but I feel like the second game is great if only they had certain elements like certain. I feel like certain gameplays should have been like in the beginning or towards the end. Like I feel like they kind of they had like so many so much misplacement for the storytelling because. Especially what ends up happening at one part of the game that kind of like makes everybody so frustrated and angry for like one half uh, half of the fan base, while the other fa- other half of the fan base kind of sees it in a different perspective of what they were trying to tell you. It's kind of like it's kind of hard for them to, for me to say like, oh yeah, they should do season two because I feel like in season if they did season two, just going straight to the game, I feel like it won't be as too highly appraised on. I think especially for both. People who enjoy the game and people who enjoy the TV series as an overall, because mm-hmm. with how what they kind of like had set up in that game, it just did. It just felt like kind of like all over the place. I see what they were trying to do, and it would have been amazing, but just execution's more of the problem. It's like I said, I don't know why I keep jumping to mind, but Last Jedi, it just feels like that same exact thing. Luke and Last Jedi, that's splitting a lot of people in. So yeah, with Ellie split a lot of people. Certain things with Joel split a lot of people. Mm. And then you have elements of Last Jedi that people think are cool and things that people hate. It's Last Jedi no uh, number number six. No, no, that's eight. the it's eight. Six is Return of the Jedi, sir. Remember, <laughs> just a respect to that to that Return of the Jedi, going, even though I it was like the weakest one out of the ask, original. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's cool, it's cool, but like it's it's like I guess equivalency to me. that. <laughs> but I I would you I, have failed uh, me for the sure. last time. God oh, damn it. I would okay. say I would say though if they do do the like your theory of them doing like a lot cuz they do have some flashbacks and I feel like that's what they should have done in the first in the second oh. game have the flashbacks be brought up to a certain character for like that huge moment to come up that kind of mm. div- that diverse so much of the fan base. Yeah, so they kind of think I know what that is but I I won't say anything y'all. Don't worry. I got you. Yeah. So I like, got spoiled cuz of Google fucking autofill but yeah, there's a big pivotal thing that like motherfuckers are like oh no you didn't right right i think that's i think season two if they want to like if they want to go to your theory of just have that like kind of flesh out like the whole relationship like between joel and 
1. 1.5, 5, like something like that, like with a lot of fillers, because they still got some story in between that. And it also gives us new more story about a certain character. If they do art, since they got the green light of what they're going to be showing later on with the series of how the, some character's story. What, what character? You want to know which character? Yeah, let me know right now, right here. I'll I'll get I'll give you the name, but I won't tell you. I'm just kidding. No, don't tell okay, me. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm messing. I was like, all right, chill, bro. You're like, you're not even over season yeah. one yet, bro. Yeah, Relax. Like, I don't want to say shit, dude. This is like a very, very sensitive spoiler. This yeah. is like if you saw No Way Home two months early type shit. Like, you do not want to spoil that one. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but but so do you say completely deviate from not uh, completely, but would you say season two should go farther away from the game, a la episode three? Bill and Frank style? Should it just really take a big departure, keep the bones of the storyline, keep the characters, but just completely switch up 75, 80% of the storyline? Yeah, I would say definitely do that because right now they're doing an excellent mm. job. But the only thing, that thing is too, is like the skeleton, pretty much the foundation of Last of Us 1, it's already in a great story itself for video, video game, uh, for v the video game itself, and also now for the live adaption. Like, the story is already great. The second portion of the game is just, it's kind of like, it's not as good as the first one. And it's always like, and it's always like that for like a lot of amazing, like amazing uh, movies, TV, uh, video games, yeah. stuff like that, anime, books, that anime. Thing. It's like the first one is always going to be like that peak. The second one is usually kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's like, it, then they're, it's going to cause like a lot of division there. So that's why it's when I heard about like when you told me today about like the green light, that's what I was kind of thinking. I'm like, okay, so they, if they're going to try to like do something different, I wouldn't mind if they kind of stray away from it a little bit because at the same time, the people who made this series and is doing working along with the people who are the, making the it, show it is the creator of the game. Yeah. Neil like Druckmann. So. I mean, who? Yeah. He the, also uh, the co-creator of the game that works at Naughty Dog mm -hmm. is one of the main showrunners writers and directors on the series. See, I didn't well. know that. If that's yeah. the case, I wouldn't even mind if they had three seasons for them. If he's one of the that's original writers, he could to totally it, just write stuff for, for this show, you know? And he knows yeah. that he made it. Yeah, so exactly. That's why so like, I'm open to it. At this point, like anything that any hater would say is like, well, dude, you're super invalid because literally the creator of the game is telling the story. Now, yeah. The same thing. It's very true. You're very speaking true. truth, but it won't stop backlash. It won't stop uh, certain fanboys from taking that approach and from taking things and spinning it into such a negative connotation and whatnot and all the entitlement of certain fans and things like that. So you're never going to get over that and mm -hmm. this and whatever. People making podcasts, people making movies, people making anime, whatever it is that you make, video games, you're going to have that passionate fan base that's going to have that entitlement over it regardless. So I think it is a definitely a dangerous tightrope they're going to have to walk, but they're going to hear bullshit regardless. But I definitely think that all of us fans that approach things with an open mind and trust in the creators to give us what they want to give us and mm -hmm. then we react to what they're actually crafting first and foremost i think us kind of fans and people that are just open-minded will be able to appreciate whatever they do and they'll be able to take it at face value whether they like it or don't like it they won't judge it before they see it and mm -hmm. they'll be willing to be open to it because like i said the guy that created the fucking game is in the golf of the damn thing he's like, that's why like i'm also like wouldn't be too mind of like that filler stuff too like uh miguel like we talked about Mc Pretty much because like they can, they probably have like a lot of like scraps or something in the rough draft or something like that with what they wanted to do for the in between to kind of expand the story between Joe and Ellie. Yep. Maybe from the even the second game that they wanted to do, but for some reason they weren't able to do it. Um, maybe that we can probably see a lot of that in season two before we get to that official second game. Uh, this Last of Us Part Two official par part mm -hmm. of the game and stuff like that. So part that's two of the game, part two of the game. Yeah, season three of the show. It's like all of that. Like I think that's why I'm not too uh, afraid of it. But I do agree. Like regardless, though, with what's coming out, there's gonna be like that fan base like that's gonna go against it because they didn't like the second game too much. Yeah. And I feel like if they did a better job of the storytelling, I think a lot of people will be kind of more of like, okay, so you might be able to win some fans over that are willing to give it a shot. Oh, yeah, sure. and even like with this series too, there's like some people is not, not even liking like the show for some reason, and I feel like the people who say do that, like they're like the the same group who want like who will go against the the majority, and this only because they want to sound interesting. Because yeah, like honestly, contrarian. Yeah, yeah, like really like because this show like a lot of people had like a lot of doubts with the casting but they're doing amazing stuff and right. um, people are still like judging like the casting of bill and frank i'm like they did okay they did great what are you talking about yeah, but I it's agree. just that it's just like he's too gay bro no. <laughs> yeah and it's like 
and it's just such a that's you why didn't I like see Frank in the goddamn game. What are they talking about? You did see Frank, but it's a it's a different yeah, yeah. it's in that scenario. I won't say anything. It's in that scenario. I won't what, say anything. Like unless <laughs> unless if like Miguel, you're gonna play the game or no? Yeah, yeah I wanna, we, we I'll, got I'll, into I'll it in the last okay, episode. Okay, okay, I just don't right, want right. to spoil every detail. Okay, okay, Let okay. Let you experience what the plot line was in the game because we did tell you what it was about and what happened, but yeah. I want to let I, you experience I, I, I it. Didn't, I do know. Kenny told time. me last, last yeah. week. Oh, but I don't okay. want to spoil it for all the fans and everyone and everyone out there and everyone watching. Well, I don't everything. give a shit. This is what happens. Look, <laughs> you open the door. Goku's no, okay. standing there. Just Goku's <laughs> there and he's about to beat some ass. And Thanos was there and said, "No resurrection." Nah, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. You know what I really want to see? Hmm. I, when you know how like uh, I, I I forgot the 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 woman's name. I guess was in charge of all this like mi- militia group. But you know how like they're in this kind of basement setting and like they're into like uh, the floors like sinking in and out like as as if it's breathing. Oh, I, I want to see what's up with that. That's oh, shit, that, I forgot about that. That is gonna be leading up to a lot with what the next a lot. Episode. Okay, like, so here we go. What, what Here's could possibly our last be. topic before we wrap it up. Then episode five, since you know the whole storyline. Give me three big details from the game that you think are definitely going to be implemented in the series. It doesn't have to be heavy spoilers, just three elements. Okay. Whatever it is. The two people that you met at the end, that's Henry and Sam. Those two, that. that's that, Henry and Sam the right there. The second they're like looking for a place to sleep, I foreshadow like, oh, they're going to yeah. run into these people that the militia over here is looking for watch. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're looking for. They didn't for. say, oh, we're freaking Sam and right, Henry and Sam. Henry and Sam. But yeah. I was like, oh, that's, there's two of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's those two. Yeah. All right. All right. It's those and two. And the floor breathing thing. What does that mean? I, I think that's where a lot of the cordyceps are going to be held at because mm-hmm. th- it's where like a lot of that probably why they were able to control it so well as a possibility. Mm-hmm. They probably kept everybody who were infected down within that level as a possibility. Uh, Maybe that's a possibility because where they're at, it's like what cold, wet, and damp, and it's moisturized, and then you see everything kind of crumbling in. Yeah, I feel like the a lot of the cordyceps stuff infected will be inside there, and that's why it's like officially nobody's like kind of allowed to go in there. Like they were like mainly with uh, that character who was leading the whole militia group or that merc- that little uh, town or whatever. When she was informed of that and she was looking at it, you kind of see it breathing in and out. I think that's when, that's where we're going to be seeing a lot more of the effect within the next, um, within the next episode. We're going to be seeing a lot more of them and also with, um, and also with the scavenger group or the people who own that area pretty much. And then that's what Joel, Ellie, Henry, and Sam, just like in a game, they kind of had to like fend off from both, um, both sides, both sides pretty much trying to get through the town without, you know, dealing uh, try not to get hurt, pretty in the sense. Try not to get infected or shot at, right, or yo. killed during that time. So there's like multiple different things coming up, and I like it because we had that slow episode. I guess kind of slow episode here. I like so like the intensity and all that, the character uh, development. But the next episode, there's gonna be a lot of shit Ooh, going on. Forward and getting more into the action. Yeah, and getting more into uh, that element of the of the game and the storyline. So it's, it should yeah. be fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to think too. Um, it's gonna be inter- I would say too. It's gonna be interesting to see more of Henry's character in the show because we didn't really get too much of him besides him and his little brother trying to survive. It's gonna be interesting to see how Henry's related with the person who, the girl who is leading that whole town or scavenger group or whatever it may be, or whatever people are gonna be calling it, sure. because it's gonna that wasn't in there, and it's that's like mm-hmm. that's part of that whole fleshing out, expanding the storyline and stuff like that. Like you yeah, said, like so a lot of potential for the future of the store, the part two storyline in the games, a lot of potential with just part one itself. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, but yeah, fuck yeah. So that all sounds good to me, man. Any final thoughts? On your end, man, before we wrap this thing up? Got any questions? <laughs> <laughs> questions? Are you, were you able to foreshadow like how the episodes end since you've already played the whole game? Um, Good question. That is an excellent question. Like what you think you would you could, I, you could see where the next episode will end at because... You know, or have they been swerving you a little bit the they, whole time? They've been... With the, a lot of the episodes, it's been a lot of swerving, but it's just a lot of fam- uh, there's still a lot of the familiar elements of the sections of the game. So it's kind of it's kind of the swerve like with recent episode Frank, uh, Bill and Frank. Oh yeah, that's something different. It kind of like they told it in a different way with those two characters, and like how we mentioned before, so much development with Bill, so much development with Frank, because we like Kenny said before, we never even met Frank besides one scene 
pretty much when you and uh, you and Joe and Bill kind of like goes into the house and they find him. And we only get to see Frank in that portion. Yeah. Bill, we see him in, as a different, different, a completely different persona in compared from like the game to the TV show. The game, he's like, get off my lawn. He's pretty much, exactly. Game, he's like, how you kids doing? You want a candy? Yeah, like, he's <laughs> no like. No creepers, though. No creepers, no creepers. Uh, yeah, and then like, that's why like with that question, like, that's why I like it a lot. Because even for people who play the game. We could kind of have like that guidance there. We kind of can kind of know it's like okay, we're kind of we're going to this point. We're going to this point, but it's going to be kind of swerving us like a little bit of how they're going to tell it. It's like they follow exactly the storyline and the whole pacing of the game, but it seems like the gameplay portions they replace with their own like uh, their own stuff. So it's mm-hmm. cool how they like. It's the same, but it's different at the same time. It's pretty crazy the way they're able to weave that in so seamlessly, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's but it's, it's, it's it's fucking incredible, man. I'm, I'm so excited it. to see what's gonna happen with Sam and Frank. I'm so ex- I mean, and Sam and Henry. Henry, sorry. I'm so excited to see what happens with those two characters. I can't wait to see the Fireflies come into this thing, and uh, the Federer and see how I'm all of them for play Tommy. into. That's, that's and oh, it's Tommy. Thing. I'm super excited for Tommy. I really like Gabriel Luna as a performer. He was an awesome Ghost Rider. One of the only things about a little bit of Agents of Shield that I watched that I liked. Gabriel Luna. He was also that's, the Terminator. That's the brother? Yeah, what? that's him. And then he was also the last hmm. Terminator in Terminator Dark Fate, and I thought he was pretty badass in that. Not as much acting range in that role, but he was really badass. So getting to see both sides of his uh, character and from episode one where he seemed like such a cool dude. Can't wait to see where they're going to go, everything there. And yeah, it's just a fucking amazing series. But we want to hear from all of you, whether you hate it, love it, fall somewhere in between. We want to hear from you. Make sure you're dropping all your thoughts down below in the comments. Hit us up on the social medias and all that good jazz. We love getting into discussions with y'all. Y'all have been so awesome and interacting with the channel so much more, dropping comments and everything like that. Uh, the mummy review that we did last year around Halloween time has has over ten thousand views, guys. It's fucking insane. It's almost eleven thousand views mummy at this review? point. Yeah, I did a For which review one? Tom on Cruise? Nah, the, no, the Brendan Fraser. Oh fuck, Tom the classic. Cruise, yeah. Brandon, dude. <laughs> that will fuck never Tom be discussed Cruise. in full on this channel unless I do <laughs> top ten worst uh, remakes shit. of all time, which you may see someday. But no, I'm talking about the Brendan Fraser 1999 classic that defined a generation. That's what I'm talking about. And yeah, the people love it. I loved making it. It was a it was a blast. I didn't really go into it trying to get views and shit. I just thought it'd be fun to talk about uh, one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite actors. But uh, yeah, that's been doing so well. You think we could do a John Wick review? Hey, John hey, Wicks. Hey, I, hey John we Wick could. Four is coming. Maybe, oh, that's right. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> oh, we I'm just so high. <laughs> review all three of these motherfuckers oh. leading up to it, man. I watched. You know? I watched all three of them twice in like um, shit, like within like three weeks. Maybe we'll do like a whole fucking long ass John Wick trilogy discussion. Maybe we'll do that. Like, that you know how nice. some girls could recite like the whole Mean Girls movie. Yeah. I want to do the same thing, but for John Wick, you know. Because I'm I love gonna need. Movie. I love those movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the gal when we coming in with that, with these reviews. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna try to dress up like John Wick. You know, being, being going, my, my hair my hair slick, slip. I have tuxedo all black. He, he did, with the fucking Benson, <laughs> Benson. I'll dress up as a Russian dude. I'll be the dad. <laughs> Damn, who am I gonna be? Oh my god, you could be. Oh, uh, I'll be Carmen from John Wick Part Two. Uh, you could be the 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 king, the the pigeon king. I forgot his name right now. Oh yeah, I'll even though I literally just Fishburne. watched it like. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good stuff, bro. <laughs> that's good stuff, bro. I'm gonna need a gun. All right, but that's gonna do it for us here, man. This literal episode is longer than any episode. So make sure you're tuning in. You ain't sleeping on any of this goodness. We got a lot of dope stuff coming at y'all this week and beyond. Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, right around the corner. That's right, it is. Woo! Phase five is jumping off. We're gonna be having our whole phase four discussions, part one, part two. Make sure you don't sleep on any of that goodness. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you on the other side, y'all. Much love and peace out. Later.